Okay, so my name is Ben, and this is my mom, Pam. Ben and Pam. Yeah, I don't think my dad's going to join us. He thinks the whole thing's a bunch of hooey. So well, this will have to be much <laughs> oh <boy. later. laughs> What it's does your mom think? Good. Pam, what do you oh. think? Your son thinks the earth is flat. What did he say, sir? He said, he says, what do you think that your son thinks the earth is flat? I thought he was mad when he was telling me to start with quite a bit ago. But the more information he gives me, I'm coming round a bit. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> so where do you want to start? What questions do you have? And uh, why does your father think the earth is a globe? Programming. Yeah, I know that. It's like, did you ask him what's his favorite globe proof? Well, here, here's where here's where I think would be really good if you could just kind of give a note, like explain the model because I think he has a hard time. I think the biggest thing he has difficulty with is frames of reference. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So I think if you could maybe show some of the graphics that explain the flat earth model. And I know he, he's a very big Bible believer. So maybe some verses from scripture that would indicate. Um, but yeah, just, just kind of roll with it. And my mom will have questions as, as things come up. So instead of just showing a model, this is a video from a balloon at 127,000 feet. The earth is supposedly spinning at 1,000 miles an hour below this balloon but it's just sitting there and there is no visible curvature anywhere. And the sun looks very local. Excuse me. It's, it's got a hot spot right here, right? If it's 93 million miles away, it should light up everything evenly, but it's a local light. What is the sun? I don't know. Nobody knows, but it's clearly a, a local, um, a local light. So, one thing your father might think is that flat earth is this. Well, this is not flat earth. This is what they want you to think it is, right? Because this is laughable. It's a joke. And uh, no flat earther thinks that this is what the earth is. So, you know, one reason that your father, your husband might uh, be laughing at flat earth is because of memes like this saying, you know, oh, we're the only flat planet or the other planet's flat. What this meme is, is two false models, a false flat earth with a fake heliocentric system. So they're mixing is it this false and this false and saying, which one is it? Well, it's neither. It's, 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 it's silly. Um, again, another meme that's out there. And this is not what flat earth is. So what I like to show is, you know, simple things like, like this. Here's a hallway. we got some lights, and it reflects off a flat floor, just like it the sun reflects off of a flat ocean. If there was curve, if it was curved, you wouldn't be able to see that line. It would just be a point. So visible reality tells us that the Earth is flat. And then, you know, when you, when you uh, think about it, you know, they, they want us to believe we're living in this spiral um, heliocentric world, we live on a rocky, lumpy ball surrounded with curved water that no one's ever seen that curve. Adjacent with air, high pressure system that we can breathe in, adjacent to a vacuum of no pressure at all. That's scientifically impossible. That breaks every law of right. thermodynamics. Um, but that's where you have to believe uh, to, to believe that you live in this crazy nonsensical system. Pam, does it feel like you're spinning, whirling and twirling like yes. this? It feels like you're no. stationary, right? Point yes. down, point down, down. That's down. Down is down for everybody. Yes. Somebody in Australia is not pointing up. They're also mm -hmm. pointing down. Down is down yeah. for everybody, but they want you to believe down is in all different directions towards the center of the earth, which is just a story. It's just a made up story. Um, and then the speeds that they want you to believe that you're going, this is the a NASA hypersonic sled track. Watch it. You can't even see it, right? That's going, going by 8.6 times the speed of sound. 
if you believe that we live on a on a the, the heliocentric system, you believe that we're orbiting the sun, not this fast, 10 times faster. You can't even fathom what that is. So you got this rocky ball of what rocks and water and air flying 10 times faster than this around the sun. And while it's doing that, it's chasing the sun at a hundred times that speed. You, your mind just short circuits. You can't process what that means. But when you go out in God's nature world, you see stuff like this. What does that tell yeah. you? That water is contained by the land that surrounds it, and it's not moving. I mean, stamp your foot on the ground, it's going to send a ripple across. Right? Yes. So, you know, they want, they want you to believe that we're uh, spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. That's a curved trajectory. So that people are like, well, you don't notice it. Like, if you were in a car going 100 miles an hour, and you had a dinner plate filled with water... And that car sped up or slowed down or take the slightest turn, um, you would you would feel it instantly, and the water would would go right out of the plate. But they want you to believe that we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, orbiting, speeding up and slowing down uh, sixty six thousand miles an hour, and chasing the sun at another almost half a million miles per hour. But again, we don't feel any of it. So, but whenever there's a, this is a pool during a, a small earthquake and look what happens to the pool, right? But we're doing all of these motions. None of them, none of them do anything, but a little shaking of the earth will do this to, to the water. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you want to go from here? What, what, I, what I, I think one of the things, one of the things my dad struggles with is the whole idea of curvature. I was talking to him this morning about how you can't see the curve, how it's not measurable. He he uh, he uses this the the example of ships over the horizon. So yeah. maybe if you could go into like how our eyes work, how perspective works. Yeah, yeah. So the ships over the horizon. Let's take a look at that first, and then we'll show you what you're really. Um, there's different th reasons why things disappear in the distance, like why you can't see um, the North Star from Australia or um, other things at other dif di distances. So here is, um, we're looking out at this horizon here, and we don't see a boat out here. But as we're looking out, we're increasing the angular size. And as it gets bigger, all of a sudden our eye can resolve, oh, look, there's a boat. There it is. Now it wasn't over the curve. It was just beyond our visible limit. So watch, my finger cannot hide this whole boat, but as it goes into the distance, if my finger was a wave in the foreground, it could hide the boat. And all of this is your horizontal eye zone. So the boat's gone, it's not over the curve. It's right there. But we've been programmed since we were little kids that boats go over a curve. If the earth was a ball, sure, you know, a boat would go over the curve and disappear, but we don't live on a ball. There's other reasons why we see things disappear from the bottom up. And on a ball with a set you know, radius, things would have to, would be required to disappear at a certain distance. At just three miles on the globe, the size that they tell us, there should be six feet of drop. That means a six foot tall person standing at the edge of perfectly calm water shouldn't be able to see the surface of the water beyond three miles because it's behind the curve. But we can see the water much farther than that. And when we sit down, it should be even closer, but we still can see way beyond where we're um, supposed to see. The other thing is like, here is a shot from, um, uh, from Malibu of Mount San Jacinto. Again, I never get it right. Um, and at 123 miles, the very top of this mountain, should you should only be able to see this tip, if that. But with an infrared lens, we can see the whole thing. Take that lens off, blue sky, and you don't see the mountain anymore. You shouldn't be able to see this. We can see it. We can see much farther. Jay Tolan Media just filmed from an airplane some distances that are unbelievable. Um, you know, Things should have been over 40 miles below the curve, but he can still see them. I'm um, flying in these planes. So there, uh, here's one of the, one of his shots hard to really see here, but when he zooms in in his videos, 
You can see these mountaintops and they're at impossible distances, impossible. Any one of these proofs um, is all you need to prove the earth is um, not a ball, right? Here's one from, uh, for, we're at a, a mountain and we can see eight different buildings over 700 miles away. There should be 40 miles of curvature, but we can see the, the mountains. The tops of those mountains should be 40 miles below the curve, 40 miles. But they're visible and you can't say refraction because that's just, you know, a Hail Mary refraction. Everything's refracting up the perfect amount to line up straight, or maybe it's just straight and level. Right. Um, could you could you show your flat earth kitchen just to show how, you know, sure. how, how we see? So, sure. Here we go. Um, where is it? Um, so everything has to do with perspective. Whenever you see these debunking videos, they never take into account that a light in the distance will be lower due to perspective. And they try to draw the angles from everything from the same height, but nothing is the same height when you um, use perspective. So here we go. <clears throat> so I got this level line right here and my counter will say is the flat earth. It's hard to see, but I'm just showing you that this line is level. Now this could be mountains or a city skyline or just the cloud deck, but I'm above it. And I'm viewing it from a celestial point of view. I'm at the same height as the sun. So it's going in a straight line. Now I have a camera on the flat counter at the other end, watching it from another point of view. And this is what you see. You see this line. Now, if I showed you this first, would you say that's level or would you say it's going down? Of course you would say it's going down. And I would say, is this going below? Is, is that going below there? It's really just going yes. beyond it. It's not, it's level. This is a level line, but this is how we see it due to perspective. I showed you, yeah, yes. I showed you it going straight across the table. Here's a combination. This is me bringing the light across. This is what it looks like from the ground. And this is the sun it goes down, 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 down. And it's just going beyond this opaque barrier which is the atmosphere actually but if there was mountains there it would go beyond the mountains um let me show you i got i'll show you another thing that'll help that um so if we're looking up where is it if we're looking up at this right we're looking up at a building it's like noon and the sun is moving away it's going beyond the building right yeah so so you know that the sun is just beyond the building, you can't see it. If you went backwards a couple miles, you'd be able to see over the building and see the sun. Or if you went up high on a balloon, you'd be able to see the sun, right? So it's just yes. beyond the building. So now let's look at this. Um, where is it? So here is how we see perspective. And we're gonna bring in um, this guy. Here's his eye line. And we throw this mountain in here the mountaintop is high above his eyes, right? Yes. <clears throat> Thousands of feet above his eyes. So now the sun is going to go away and it's just going beyond the mountain, just like it went beyond the building. So if he went, if he went up, he'd be able to see it. Or if he went backwards a couple of miles, so let's move him backwards. As he moves backwards, the mountain gets smaller and smaller. We'll just fill it in. And so now he can see the sun again. Right. What yes. can we what can we say about the top of this mountain? It looks like it's at his eye level, but it, we know it's thousands of feet above his eye level. But perspective brings everything into that horizontal eye zone. Right. So if the sun goes farther away, it just goes just like the building beyond the mountain. So it's not below it. It just went beyond it. And everything looks like it's at eye level because that's how our eyes work. It brings everything to eye level. Here's the sun again. Now it's above the atmospheric deck and we have the cloud showing the atmospheric deck. And if you look at these clouds, they're all merging into this zone. So it will make the sun go away again. And now what can we say about this line here? Well, we can say, well, that's the top of the mountain. It's thousands of feet above his eyes. 
It's also the clouds, which are thousands of feet above the mountain, but it all looks like it's at his eye level. So the sun just goes beyond it and he can't see it. He can't see it at all um, because that's the way um, that's the way our eyes work. So let me, I have one more I want to show you. Um, um, where is it? Is that it? No. Um, is this it? No. So here's the sun just going away and it looks like it's going down. It's just going away. This is all perspective, right? When you look at uh, uh, some streetlights, they're all, they're not going down. They're all the same height. It's a level street, but they look like they're yeah. going down. Yeah. They look like they're going down. It's just um, perspective, right? Here is uh, the moon rising, but it's actually just coming towards you from beyond the city skyline. Um, right here's a bridge it looks like it's going down but everything just goes to this yellow horizontal eye zone also known as our horizon um, can, can you show this in a few minutes how the sun how the whole thing works over the flat earth map over the I will map? I will I will in a moment so here here is you know we're just zooming in so here is a person and this is the horizon his eye, at his eye level. And there's this cloud directly above him. You with me, Pam? Yeah, just keep talking. All right, come on. So, so this cloud is high above him, thousands of feet above him. And as the clouds move into the distance, they look like they're getting lower and lower and they merge with the horizon. But you know that this cloud right here, this little cloud is the same height as this cloud. It just looks like it's at the horizon. So if I drew a string from his eyes to that cloud and he could see that string, that string would be going parallel over the land to that cloud because it's all at his eye level. But is it really going parallel? What if you were standing underneath this cloud and could see the string? If you were standing underneath the cloud, you would see a string going sloping down to him from the cloud. Mm -hmm. But he sees it going straight across. So this is the, 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 the person who's looking. This cloud on the, his horizon from a side view would look like this. So as the sun moves over the earth, it goes beyond this. This is his horizon. And it disappears, right? This is how, this is a side view. So, but he's seeing the sun disappear beyond this because this is his horizon and if we look at it from his point of view it would look like this so here's that same cloud here's that same line and the sun is going down but it's just going away and it goes he it looks like it's going below the ball but it's all perspective provably so it's just going beyond right those your horizon that you see that line that's at your eye level it could be thousands, it is thousands of feet above your eyes. And when somebody walks by it, it disappears like that. But this looks like it's at your eye level, even though it's way below. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a lot to take in, but once you understand how perspective works, um, then you can't, you really can't unsee it. It's going to occur to me, what about how... Why don't opticians understand that perspective thing? Opticians? Yeah. Why? Because they, they deal with your eyes, don't they? Surely they know how the eyes see. Yeah, but they've been programmed to think it's a ball as well. They yeah. Don't, they don't. There's no question. They don't. So when, when, when we see, we see what we call in our personal atmospheric dome, because we see straight up as far as we can see and we see that way as far as we can see and it creates this dome of vision so as the sun moves over we actually see the sun you know at these different positions because we see it inside our yeah. personal atmospheric um dome if you will okay um yeah. what else i want to show you um you asked for what else did you want to see you want to see something else i think one of the uh, 
a good thing for my dad to be able to see later would be to see how the sun moves over the, the flat earth and how seasons work. Because, like I say, I think everything is frames of reference. So yeah. He, yeah. So right now, it's uh, December 22nd. We're right at, we just passed it. What's that? You make, is it possible to make that bigger or is that as big as it can get? I, mean, I can make it bigger. How's that? That's great. So... So the sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn right now. It actually just started turning around to come back yesterday. So we're past the, the solstice. So that outer yellow line is the farthest south the sun will travel. And then it takes six months to go all the way back in to that inner yellow line. Hold on, let that go away. There you go. So you see the inner yellow circle? So in June, yeah. in June 21st, it'll be over that line. So where what's where are you guys? What state are you in? Well, my mom's my mom's in England. Right now? Where are you right now? In England, yeah. Oh, you're in England. So England, I can't really point to it, but you see where England is. Um, yep. it's on it's in close. So right now it's our winter because the sun is far away. What happens when a light is far away? It's lower in the sky, right? If you're standing under a street light that's directly above you, that's that's up there. But what about the street light that's in the next one over or five street lights down the road? It's not above you. It's lower in the sky, right? Even though you know that street light's the same height above the street, but to you, it's lower. So yes. the sun is low in our sky because it's far out south now. It's far out south now. So six months later, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sun will move in to the Tropic of Cancer and it's much closer to the UK. And you see Miami, Florida, I can't point to it. Um, it's hot in Miami in June because the sun goes right over Miami. It's hot in Mexico because the sun is going right over Mexico. It's hot in uh, a lot of places, but it's, it's closer <laughs> to us because it's hot. Imagine if you and I were sitting outside on a freezing cold winter day, sitting outside, and we're 25 feet apart. Right. And your son comes over and he says, Mom, you look cold. And he holds a heat lamp 15 feet over your head, a big heat lamp. Right. It's got a pole and it's directly over you. You're like, oh, that feels so good. Right. I'm 20 feet away. I'm freezing. I can see the heat lamp. It's lower in my sky. For you, it's directly above you. For me, it's over there. It's lower. Okay. So now he walks over to me, keeping it at the exact same height, 15 feet above the ground. And if I watch it, I see it there, I see it there. I, it's getting higher and higher and higher and higher, even though it's still 15 feet above the ground. But from my point of view, it's higher and it's closer. I'm warm, you're cold. My summer, your winter. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. They want you to believe that it's tilted, you know, that we're tilted away from the sun. That makes seasons. Tilted away from the sun. What about when we spin away from the sun? The sun is all the way on the horizon in June and it's warm. That's so we couldn't be tilted more far away. They want us to believe that the little tilt of the earth causes the seasons. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. Could, um, could you do a little bit on how the stars maintain their uh, position and never change? Yeah. So, so um, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the in our galaxy, there's a hundred billion stars, they tell us. Right. And where are our solar systems moving four and a half billion miles a year through the galaxy? All the other stars are moving. They tell us that um half of the stars, not half, like 80% of the stars are in binary orbits. So that means that they're orbiting around each other while they're spinning around in the galaxy. It's a lot, it's a lot, but this is, so you got all of these movements, all of these stars, everything's moving, but never in history have two stars changed place um, due, to, due, to, due to, you know, when you're driving down the road, things will change place. The closer yeah. things move faster. Never in history have two stars done that ever. Even though we go 186 million miles every six months to the other side of the sun, there's no parallax, parallax, right? There's no parallax anywhere, ever, in all of history. 
That tells us that the lights that we see that we call stars are fixed in the sky, in the firmament. Bible talks about that. Believe. You've always believed that? Yeah. I've never I've never believed that they're spinning around. I've always believed that they're fixed where they are. They're fixed in the sky. I think yeah. they're angelic. I think they're the the where souls live. I don't know. That's just me speculating. Um, this, so, this is oh, the star Sirius. That doesn't look like a burning ball of gas in the sky. That looks something yeah. amazing. That's some vibrational pattern, you know. Um, again, our consumer optics have outgrown their lives. This is uh, one of my favorites. You can see this, the star Arcturus. You can see this with your naked eye. That doesn't look like a burning ball of gas and possibly located in a space vacuum. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No, it just convincing me more of what really initially I've always believed, but you've been taught otherwise. Yeah. 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 It's, um, um, people say, well, maybe... well, if stars aren't what they tell us, then what are they? I don't know. I told you what I think they are, but we don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. God yeah. knows, right? Yeah. And there's lots yeah. of information in the Bible, you know, but again, I'm a scientific guy. I like to look at the science, right? You can't have gas collapsing upon itself to make a star when gas violently fills the available space in every Every, everywhere. I mean, you have mm -hmm. gas, it's going to fill the available space and equalize. That's what gases do. But in the heliocentric space, they collapse upon each other, they create a vacuum, and they burn forever without getting smaller. Last time I lit a bag of hydrogen on fire, it exploded, right? But our sun is burning 186 billion tons a minute, an hour, or whatever it is, a day. Um, and it never gets any smaller for billions of years. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And our sun, you know, our sun is and uh, are, is made of mostly hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen and helium defy gravity, but somehow it has gravity and it's holding on to all these other planets at at uh, distances that are are so ridiculous that you can't even imagine. I think the analogy that Jaron came up with is if the sun was a golf ball, where would Earth be? And I think it's 70 miles away. The sun was a golf ball. Earth is a BB 70 miles away. And somehow that golf ball of gas is holding on to the earth and all of the other planets. Okay. Yeah. The, the scale is ridiculous. Yeah. Could you, could you talk a little bit as to why they've tried to convince people it's a ball? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's my favorite question. Um, so, if if they could convince you, here let me let me pull this up. Um, why the lie, right? If they can convince you that um, you're insignificant, that you're in the middle of a, you're on a speck of dust flying through an infinite galaxy, what they're doing is they're hiding God. They're trying to hide God. They're trying to dilute God. What do you do when you want to dilute something? You put it in a bigger container like infinite space. They, they want you in a situation where um, you can still doubt the existence of God. Fortunately or unfortunately for them, when you discover that the earth is not from a big bang and that it's intelligently designed, we can talk all day about when, how, yeah. where, you have undeniable proof that there is a creator and and they the satanists that run this world don't want you in a situation where you can't deny the creator there's a verse in job i think that says you know once you see my creation you can no longer deny my existence right and that is the truth because i was an atheist if you will i'm embarrassed to say it but I used to believe in science and the big, big bang. I still believe in science, not the hijack science that they use, right? That's called scientism. And uh, when I discovered that the earth was flat, 
I was like, wow, there's a creator. And then my journey goes, uh, goes on from there. Um, so what's this one? No, it's just that um, they get you from such a young age yep. and start filling you with all this stuff that it's all you've ever known until you come to know God for real. Yes. So and they, then you question things. Yeah. They, they, they constantly, they just give us all of the stuff, you know, well, there's a globe because philosophy said so because we worship the sun, you know, all, all of this stuff is not science. It's pseudoscience. Um, right. And they, they're literally trying to make you insignificant. So here's, here's the, the bottom line is the bottom line is, is um, they don't want you um, knowing where you live. They put us in a prison for our mind, which is the globe, right? If you did, you watch the Truman Show, remember the Truman goes, I want to be an explorer. The teacher pulls yeah. on the map and goes, everything's been, we already found everything, right? You can't be an explorer. What if there's more land? I don't know if there is. What if there is? Um, we know that they're hiding free energy. So if you didn't have to pay for air conditioning, heat, or fuel for your car, wouldn't that be nice? What if all that was free? What if all that was free? Would free that would free up some of your resources, and you could have as much energy as you wanted to do other productive things. They're hiding that because that's how they control us with energy, with food, with the belief that we're running out of supplies when we're not, with the belief that we're overpopulated when we're not. It's crazy. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a crazy 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 world out there. Um, <clears throat> and you know, when I say the Satanists that run this world, there really are evil devil worshiping people that are in the highest places of power. They, uh, they're trying to use us to create their dystopian world because they need our thoughts to create their reality. They need us to, to think, um, evil, like th with all these movies that are coming out, um, leave the world behind. I don't know guys, if you guys have heard about that yet, um, put on by, no. uh, it, it's a, it's a Netflix movie, um, produced by the Obamas, Michelle and Michael. And, um, they, uh, they, it's a, about, about an apocalypse coming, but what they're doing is, you know, I call it revelation of the method, but it's a little, which is like, they, they always tell us. And, and I used to say that they tell us because they have to, I think part of that is true, but I think the real reason they tell us is because they need us thinking it into existence. They need us being afraid so that literally the demons could go, well, you know, we're all prophets of God. Well, your prophets are thinking this, therefore I can do it. Right. So yeah. they want us focusing on all of this negative stuff. But when we unplug from their matrix and that's what flat earth does to you when you unplug from their system you no longer feed into their energy system now a lot of people don't believe that's true that's okay but it is true and when you don't believe that's how they get away with it that's how they get away with it we're born into god's world we're all um inheritors of this world equally but they've created a fake world for us and they've, they've, they've literally documented us into it with our birth certificate. And then so we're on their fake world. And the, the, he who creates it owns it. So they own the globe. And then when you're on their globe using their fake money, um, you have to abide by their rules. And it's only when you mm -hmm. step off their globe back to your true position in this world um, that you, can you break free from their power. They have no power other than your belief and your willingness to give away your God-given rights. Right. It's not easier to do in America than it is in England. <laughs> <laughs> somebody uh, asked, um, what is Flat Earth? Uh, somebody was asked, uh, Flat Earth was asked, what has Flat Earth or, um, done for your well-being? And uh, the three top, top answers were um, more peace, and I'm definitely more at peace, understanding, you know, that we're not in this helocentric nonsense. Um, <clears throat> greater sense of freedom and a closer connection to the creator. 
that's a pretty good reason, you know, to 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 pay attention to this stuff. Yeah. Um, this world is uh, not what we think it is, and um, it, it's uh, it's actually much more a much more amazing place, a much more amazing place. Right. And uh, I think it's a war for your soul. They're trying to lure your soul away with the soul lure system. Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah. Yeah. They they want your soul and uh, they can have it as long as you're willing to give it to them. And there's so many people that have, you know, given their soul away for fame and fortune and it never works out well. Just look look at all of them. Um, But they want you um, denying creation. They want you, um, you know, living in this heliocentric uh, world. And, uh, you know, there, there's divine law, um, which is the law of God. There's common law, which is the law of the land. And then the statute, admiral time, admiral maritime law um, is the law of the sea or man's law. So in order to convince man to give up his, um, his divine rights for their, con- wait, wait, does that say divine? Is that a typo? That's a friggin' typo. Um, divine rights for their common rights, you have to convince them they're not divinely created in a divine world. So that's what they're doing. The globe is to make you think you're insignificant, to make you think that you're nothing, to never let you, um, your mind expand to the full potential that it has. They're trying to keep us scared, sick, and alone. Right. Yeah. How, how much time we got left, Dave? Go oh, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. All right. Would you be willing to just touch real quickly on, if you could, the kind of timeline of events that led up to the Antarctic Treaty? My dad's very curious as to why no one's allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. And maybe tie that in with how NASA was formed afterwards to hide what bird found. Yeah. So, so, you know, in the 1940s and fifties, they were doing, uh, um, you know, project high jump, which is Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It contains our waters. Um, and, uh, one of the things, um, bird said was when he went over the South pole, he found land bigger than the United States, um, filled with resources that no human has ever set foot upon. Hold on one second. I got to get a plug. Hold on. Go ahead. So he found he found resources that um, the land bigger with, than no human has ever set foot upon, and um, and then all of a sudden the Antarctic Treaty happened. Hey, don't go to Antarctica. All the countries in the world agree no one can go to Antarctica, but we're going to the moon, a place that nobody can confirm anything, and it's all a bunch of Freemasons went to the moon. So why can't we independently explore Antarctica? Now you can uh, spend a lot of money and go. It's a little tip right here um, to Rothschild Island or, or uh, Deception Island. <clears throat> and um, they want you to, uh, and that's all, that's all you're allowed to see, right? Here's a, this is somebody showing, uh, they think it's a, a passage through, that this is Antarctica, we live in here. Maybe this is the passage through. I live uh, right near New York City and, um, the Hudson River meets Long Island Sound. And at that meeting place, the water is crazy. It's crazy. And it looks, this looks like there's an intersection of different oceans, maybe. I don't know. But this is very interesting footage. It's almost kind of like at the tip of, the tip of South America. It's the, same, it's the same there. The waters get crazy where they meet. It's hard to get around. Yeah, so... One, one question I was going to ask you, I, I heard you on a, a recent podcast saying that, you know, you, you don't feel convinced or compelled yet by any evidence that Antarctica does go all the way around. And I remember the map, I think it was Reagan on Air Force One, and it showed it was a flat earth map, but Antarctica was a continent. And I'm just wondering if you feel like that maybe, I know I've also heard you say, um, like Vibes of Cosmos, how they're doing the moon map. Do you think it's like there is a continent there, but maybe it's frozen ice around and, you know, they don't want us going south because there is nothing stopping us getting out if we can get through? I don't know, man. You know, th- this, um, maybe this is all frozen here 
and sometimes it opens up and then there's more continents out here. Uh, maybe the earth is bigger than, than what we're telling us. Maybe, you know, when Bible talks about the earth, here are the four corners of the earth. I don't know. I don't know. It could be much bigger. Maybe not. <clears throat> but it's provable that Antarctica is not a continent at the bottom of an impossible space ball. There's no photos of Antarctica from space. Um, everything else is mapped, but Antarctica, you can't go there physically and you can't go there virtually. When, when you try to measure Antarctica on Google Earth, it doesn't let you measure it. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. Every photo is a cartoon, right? We don't get any photos of uh, the center of Antarctica. Uh, it, it's kind of like satellites in space. But, you know, maybe the world is set up like this. Maybe, maybe, you know, this is the ice wall. Or maybe the ice wall is out here. I don't know. <coughs> It's just know what we've been told. Yep. Totally. Any other questions you think you want to maybe get answered for that? Or? I don't know, because I don't know what kind of thing Dad would ever mm -hmm. ask. Okay. So um, here, here's my suggestion. Do you guys watch movies together ever? No. I don't <laughs> watch movies. Well, well, well here's I do. Here, here, give your mom the playlist from the app right here. Um, <laughs> Just found it on her phone. What's that? She has the app. I just found it on her phone. So nice. But if you go to, to the web button, that's the more resources page, and then go mm -hmm. to um, Flat Earth documentaries, all of these videos will blow your mind. Every single one of them. Okay. Um, they're fun to watch. And then you know this twenty-one questions, an excellent one. This is a, a short one, twenty-five minutes. Um, a whole bunch of Navy whistleblowers. Here's one when they say, where's your model? Here's our model, thousands of years old. A computer they found off of Greece from 2,000 years ago. That is a working flat earth model. Um, all of these movies are being hidden from you in your Google search. So check them out. Yep. <coughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Well, Dave, I think that's going to be a good introduction, not just for my mom. I think she's fallen off the fence <laughs> I, I just need to get my dad thrown over the fence now so tell him I, I appreciate tell him about my three bitcoins for one globe proof if he believes it he has to have one proof otherwise he's a religious globe zealot right you have to have one yes. proof right yep i believe you yes. guys are in england but i have no proof of it all right right i believe you are right. but i have no proof right Okay. Okay. All right then. Right. Well, I'm really thankful that we managed to get you oh, on the the. You're welcome. Yeah. Because yeah. um, um, to be honest, <coughs> I don't think I've ever really thought about it until Ben said about flat Earth. Nobody and has. I thought he was, mad. but the more information I get. But what I would ask you was, this is going to sound silly, but how do you console, uh, console being a flat earther, but being a Christian? I know about the creation bit, but what I'm talking about... On, on, the, on the app, you can show the, on, the biblical flat earth. Okay. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you hit this web button right here, the one that looks yeah. like a spider web... And then right here yeah. is biblical flat earth videos. Start watching those. They're amazing. Okay. I just um I just added, I added um this whole series here is amazing. This preacher is fantastic. But um there's there's tons, tons and tons and tons. Um, and just start watching them. I don't know how you can be a Christian Bible believer and not understand that the earth is flat. There's so many verses in the Bible. Um, talking about the flat earth from page one, God separated the waters from the waters, separated them and created the firmament, right? Yes. That's the flat earth, everything. There's so much. There was just a big debate in, uh, with a, 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 a global Bible church guy and Dean Odell, our flat earth preacher. Amazing. Dean destroyed him. 41 verses he went over that prove the Bible is talking about flat earth. And this guy had nothing to come back with. Nothing except. Did he, he throw him out of the church? 
Yeah. Then you can throw him out of the church. Yes. That's what happens when um when you're losing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. so. All right. Well, I'm gonna assume maybe you've got another another meeting, so I'll let you get a break and we'll take off. And I really appreciate your time and doing this for me and my mom. All right. So mm -hmm. thankfully thanks. I'm no thanks. longer the crazy guy. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks. Very, very all right, thanks. All right, God keep, bless. Keep research, keep researching. Go watch those videos. You have the app. Watch those videos. You Hello. really, you really like them. All right. Yeah, see ya. I will. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye.